the Scandinavian Road Marking Association. It was founded in uh, 1972. We have members in uh, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. It includes uh, contractors working on the road, material manufacturers, machine builders, consultants, equipment manufacturers. Uh, we try to uh, represent uh, the members' interest uh, to drive the development of uh, road markings further. And we do that to go uh, towards different stakeholders in the society. If we look at the, the Scandinavian markets, uh, Sweden is the, the biggest market there in respect of roads. You could see there are about 215,000 kilometers of road. Uh, the second one is uh, Norway, and the third one is uh, Denmark. Denmark is although bigger than Norway when it comes to the amount of highways. Uh, the total market for road markings in these three countries is about 75 million euro, or like I normally say, 1,500 Volvo cars. It's not much. Uh, if we look at the accident statistics, up in the blue right corner, you see it for Sweden. It's going down for many years, but it tends to flat out. And right now, we are not meeting the goals set from the European levels. You could see for the other Nordic countries that it's also uh, flattened out or slightly increasing. If we look on the uh, European level, I will not take too much on that. Uh, there are about 25,000 people who are dying in traffic every year. Uh, Europe is a safe place compared to many other countries. You could see on a global perspective, there's about eight Boeing planes that is uh, crashing every day. Uh, on the diagram, you could see that we will not meet the goals by the European Commission set for 2020. And I think uh, Harl Morsbeck will come back talking a little bit more about that. The Scandinavian market, we typically have the following customers, the, the road authorities, the municipalities, and private customers. There are typically two types of contracts. One is with uh, performance contracts that is valid for, for many years, typically plus four years. And then we have the unit contracts with warranty requirements during the contract period. Uh, after the contract period, there are no requirements for the performance on the road. It's important to remember that. Uh, there are quite high uh, requirements in Scandinavia. Uh, when it comes to safety, uh, you're basically not allowed to walk outside on the road. You need to be protected inside a vehicle with TMA protection. So the, the pictures up on the right, that's a typical situation you could see. Uh, has quite high focus on uh, training for, for the employees. And uh, like Jan was talking about with, uh, with the emissions on the machines, it's also quite strict. Uh, the employees working on the road need to go through proper training. Uh, since 2016, we have introduced product certification in the Scandinavian market. So that is now valid in uh, Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. Uh, although there are certifications, there are still performance contracts, uh, performance requirements. And that is typically what we talk about, uh, retroflexion. Uh, and for, for uh, all the countries, we have 150 millicandela as, as the requirement in dry conditions. So this uh, requirement, where does that come from? It comes back to a study that was done in the late 80s by the European Commission here, uh, called Cost 331. And it's focusing on the, on the need from the human eye the human drivers. And we're all different. Uh, and you could see how it looks like if you're 60 years old or if you're 20 years old. And, and you need to have a certain visibility distance to see the road markings. Uh, and uh, if you take the, the area of the markings and with the visibility on it, uh, you have the visibility distance. 
if you divide that by the speed, then you get the preview time. And uh, uh, in this study, it recommended to have three seconds as preview time to have a comfortable driving. But now we have uh, some other stakeholders. Uh, we see all with uh, uh, ADAS and the future autonomous driving. So if we look at the cameras, I mean, the cameras, they are not very exclusive. It's cheap cameras, maybe worse than the one you have in your mobile phone. And uh, that's a simple rule if you listen to uh, the company Mobileye, who's supplying roughly 70% of the sensors on the market. If you can't see it, the camera can't either. If you look at LiDAR, that is also uh, common here, uh, this is uh, one supplier of uh, LiDAR equipment, but the message is the same if you talk to organizations like Klepa, or if you talk to associations like ASC, where all these sensor manufacturers, they are, they are gathered. Uh, they also require uh, visibility on the road markings, especially reach reflection, and especially in, in, in poor weather conditions. And they want to have contrast between the road markings and the pavement. And there's been uh, quite some studies done to see what's the benefit of this uh, assisted driver uh, assistant system. Uh, in the US, they say that this technology can reduce the, the casualties on the road by about 30%. The most common accident in the States and also in the, in the Scandinavia is where you leave your lane, either go out on the ditches or if you hit the meeting car. And in Sweden, there was a, a study saying that half of these type of accidents could be reduced. So I hear a lot of focus that uh, we don't need road markings anymore because uh, the autonomous driving don't need it. Uh, and maybe that is true, uh, but I think it will take quite some time and I don't think our personal cars is on top of the agenda for that. If you look at this estimate done by the Danish Road Authority, they state that by 2055, then 100% of all the new vehicles sold will be with class five. And that, then there will be about another 20 years before the whole, uh, uh, all the vehicles are exchanged. There are a lot of estimates, this might be wrong, this might be right, but nevertheless, it will take some time before we're there. And I'm not sure it will be Germany that's the first, listening to uh, Andre's speech here about uh, the emotional driving. Uh, and uh, this is visualized. Uh, maybe some days you want to do manual driving all the way to, to, to work. Uh, but I think in the, in the coming decades it will look like this, where you will have autonomous driving first when you get out on the highway. When you leave your, your car, and before you get out on the highway, you need to be in control yourself. And also when you leave the highway and, and take the, the last few kilometers to, to your office, then you also need to do manual driving. Also if there are se severe weather, or if there's an accident or uh, work zone, you also need to take care of the manual driving. So I think it's better to focus on here and now. These are the uh, sales statistics uh, and, and close estimate on when we will have the lane departure warning, when we will have the lane keeping assistance, and the future ELKS, that's another system. Uh, so about uh, in uh, 2025, uh, the majority of all new cars will have this technology. Uh, and with the LKA, it will be a little bit slower, but we're soon there. So it's time to, uh, to upgrade the infrastructure right now. For the coming decades, it will be a mixture, mixed fleet. And we need to, uh, to have uh, infrastructure supporting the driving from, from, from both. So uh, having said that, how do the road markings look like? So I'm going to show you a few slides about uh, assessment on the conditions of road markings. Uh, in Sweden, this has been done since 2011. 
Uh, the road authority have uh, awarded a contract to the company Rumble to make a survey of making, uh, doing this with uh, mobile equipment. So uh, in uh, uh, 2018, that's a little bit mixed uh, pictures here between 18 and 19, they took 442 objects, uh, each being 10 kilometers, and each object contains uh, the right edge, the center and the left edge. And if that was on a highway, the center was uh, the lane marking and the left uh, was the, 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 the left lane marking. So they're trying to get a, a representative uh, selection out of the whole country. And you can see by the color on the map, if it's red, then it's poor. If it's green, then it's good. And you could see that uh, the development has uh, have gone down, and it's more or less level out on uh, on a performance of about where 50% of the measured roads. These are not containing all roads in Sweden. It's only the, with a traffic intensity uh, that is above 1,000 vehicles, I believe. So about 50% of the roads are meeting the requirements of 150 millicandela. And it's, it's important to do this year by year. And as you could see here, uh, there's quite some difference between the different part of the country. Uh, so you could see up uh, on the west coast of Sweden, they're having quite high standard of road markings. Uh, more than 80% is meeting the requirements. And then you could see in around the Stockholm area and on the northern part that it's on a much lower level. And I don't think the, the answer to all this is that they used a shitty product up in the red areas and a very good one in the green. There's more to it than that, although it has some impact. Uh, and the tendency is that where it's going good, it's getting better and where it's going poor, it's getting worse. That was in dry conditions. If you then look at what is it in wet conditions, which uh, to both the humans and for the, for the machine driving is more important, then about 25% of the roads are meeting the requirements. Uh, in Sweden, this was done since 2011. Uh, that's a five-year project doing the same type of survey where it includes Denmark and Norway as well. And, uh, and here you could see the vehicle and you could see the type of roads that are included in there. Uh, there are not too many road class A, so that's not on the focus of the survey here. Here's the, the heat map for, uh, for that. And uh, I, I think you could say that uh, it's the same, same message all over. About 50% of the road markings meet the requirements in dry. Uh, you could say that Denmark is doing worse than the other two countries. Uh, Norway is having the highest reach reflection. That's one mistake in the survey, it's in Norway there are yellow road markings and that is included in the average. So uh, uh, the percentage for Norway is at 57%. Uh, the average in Sweden is at 50 and Denmark is at 38. So if we only had the white markings, the difference to Norway would be, would be better. Uh, it could also be seen that on the motorways in Denmark, uh, it is uh, really poor. Uh, it is has, having lower uh, reach reflection on the highways than it does on the smaller roads. Uh, it is somewhat compensated by, by, by the, the, the width, so the preview time is not as bad. Uh, then if you look at the type two markings, Norway is doing better than the other countries. And one reason for that, besides that spending more money on road marking, is that they do inlaid road markings. 
So uh, to give some, uh, some recommendations, uh, which we have a dialogue with, with the road authorities, but I think it's important for, for you as well. It is to have clear and specified requirements in tenders and contracts following the need of both human and for, for others. Do performance measurements with reliable equipment and educated staff. It's not enough just to having the requirements or having the rules. You need to check it as well. And uh, ideally, you do that with a test program uh, and make sure you get the same pattern in different regions, in, in different countries. Uh, and do that by having both self-control and doing third-party measurements. When you've done that, in order to have a fair game in the marketplace, you need to have clear consequences if there are non-conformities. To emphasize the usage of, of right quality by all suppliers and contractors. And not the least, dedicate the financial resources uh, to meet the, the needed performance on the roads. Uh, and the challenge for all our industry is uh, to get uh, new, new people into the industry uh, and have enough resources for that. That will result in cost saving for the society due to reduced cost uh, related to the accidents. It will improve traffic flow and uh, increase comfort in driving. Uh, it will support new technology and it will support the hybrid infrastructure that we will face in the coming years. These are the targets from Denmark by the Danish Road Authority and uh, increased visibility for both humans and autonomous vehicles, increased safety, comfort, and improved traffic flow, reduced noise on the roads. Nobody wants to have uh, noise from the, from the road markings when they invested so much in a silent road. And do that by having low cost and with focus on, uh, on, the, on the environment. And it's important for, for SVM as, as an association to, uh, to work with the road authorities. We would like us to go hand in hand to improve uh, the infrastructure and improve the safety. So uh, some of the members in, uh, in SVM have, have cooperated together with uh, the Danish Road Authority to, uh, to solve the problem they've had on having a type 2 markings and still having them silent for, for the uh, neighbors when they pass the center line or when they pass the lane markings. So uh, uh, this marking is uh, having type two performance. And as you could see by the graph, if you take a flat marking driving in, uh, in 50 kilometers per hour, you have uh, a noise level of about uh, 88 on the flat markings. If you look at the most common uh, structure that we have in Denmark, it's called long flex. You have a, a noise level of about 97. Also multidot that we'll see here is somewhere in between. So, so the noise is, it has just been too big for the Danish road authorities to allow it as center marking or for lane markings. But with this new long dot that has been developed together here, uh, we get the same noise level as a flat marking. And uh, we have high hopes for that in Denmark, and I think there will be interest for it in also other countries. And I'm sure you can reach out to, to Hoffman and to some of the members for, from SVMF, SVMF if you want to, to learn more. Yeah, that was all for me. Thank you.